with you today. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dalton Groothoff. I'm speaking from beautiful Rwanda. If I just move aside a little bit, you can see the, the green hills. It is uh, an amazing, beautiful, green and clean and safe country that many people don't know. And uh, I'll share a little bit of how I ended up here. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm working closely in collaboration with Anthony and with Krishna in hopefully inspiring people thinking about leadership and about their territory and about their personal journey through mountains, but also rivers and swamps. I'm originally from Netherlands. Uh, I grew up in, in the north where there's a lot of snow now. I miss that a little bit though, but um, yeah, I, I, I've always been fascinated by courage from, the, from a young age on, I'm fascinated by people and why people, some people do what they do and others have completely other ways of living and, and definitions of what is happiness and success. And I remember wanting to study anthropology or psychology and both of those decisions, I just did, I felt from maybe outspoken expectations, maybe you all recognize this, uh, that that wasn't a good idea. I think Krishna mentioned you live your, your parents' dreams. And I think that was never really something that was told, told to me, but something that you sometimes pick up. So I ended up studying business. And I, I did not like it at all. I changed to sociology and started working really in the field of organizations, having a certain strategy and mission and vision, and then how to get the people to, one, understand it, uh, but also really own it and have the capabilities to deliver it. And this was, I worked in the field of executive search um, and uh, trying to measure personality and predict people's potential and growth potential. So I worked a lot in, in that kind of environment, corporates, all kinds of uh, industries, um, talent management, and I became a coach since 2010. But Life in, in Netherlands, I loved it. I love also my family and my friends, but I was also always curious. And I felt life is so much bigger than the Netherlands. And this curiosity uh, led me to, and maybe a bit of courage, um, led me to quit my, quit my job and hop on a, on a one-way ticket to Asia, where I started wandering around in search of inspiration, in search of new ways of, of, of living and new ways of what, understanding what people value. And I ran into Anthony in Tokyo, in Japan, <clears throat> about six years ago. And we talked about leadership and about life and about what is important in life. And the way he was talking, I'm sure the, those of you who were there in the first session also felt some of that, how, how it resonated with me. And I felt like, yeah, let, let's go back to what is important and be inspired. And I followed uh, one, of, one of his leads and, and joined a small team in Kenya, Nairobi, that worked with the process of territory mapping. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but it's basically trying to look at your territory as Anthony described the importance of knowing your area. Where is the competition coming from? Where are we heading towards? Uh, what do we need to do to keep our community strong and safe? These kind of questions we brought into organizational settings and leaders started to hear how their teams and employees saw the territory and saw the reality. And me from a coaching perspective, I then jumped in to help those leaders take that new insight and understanding and how they could then adapt to be really the Sher Sherpas up the mountain and help the people through the mountains and through the swamps. And, and that is what I love so much about coaching. I think we talk a lot about courage. We talk about challenges and about this challenging time that we're in. And like Krishna is saying, we cannot so much of so many things we can't control, but we can try to control ourselves. And that is really what I want to, to try to have you reflect on. What can you do with each other though? Not only you, but what is within your reach and within your level of, of influence? 
And for that, um, I'd love to show you uh, a slide with, with an image of, of a map that, that you can kind of follow that could describe a journey. And if, if we start at the right hand side where there's behind, uh, past the river of commitment, it's a bit of a green land. The sun is shining there uh, over a community sitting around the fire. There are clear targets or targets are being hit. And you see a compass representing uh, the moral compass that, that, that we, of which people can live by and make decisions by. And you see the scale representing balance. People on that side of, of the river, we, we, we'd love to reach somewhere where there's balance, enough balance in terms of what is important in life and what we can do. And you see a tree with deep roots. So when we are in the storms, that we still stand tall and stand, stand strong, even though the branches may shake. In Papua New Guinea, they say, the strength of a tribe, you can really tell by looking at the health of the trees. So I think that is, that is also something to aim for, that we keep, stay strong with each other and healthy and have people around the fire in a green land. And what, is, what we often find ourselves in, if we then look at the left side of the, of the map, where it's a bit more gray, where there's still so much ambiguity, uh, a lot of fog at the moment. What is exactly happening? Where do we need to go? What is going to happen? And we need to inspire others. It's, it's part of our leadership journey, but we have fear ourselves and maybe our, our hearts feel constricted. So if, if, we, if we look at leadership the way we look at it uh, together with Anthony and Krishna, you know, you have to be bold to first look at what is the river that's holding us back? What is really holding us back? And what do we really need to face in order to lead our teams through the territory into the right direction? And Anthony was talking about the feathers, about a man with many feathers handing out wisdom, handing out knowledge. So what for you and your leadership, what can you share? Is it the way that you interact with the people around you? Is it the insights that you have? What can you share? Which feathers can you hand out to the people around you? And what is it actually that we are hunting? This is a nomadic principle, of course, hunting. We don't talk like that in our normal lives, but the metaphor can be useful. What are we actually after? So what is it that we are after? And what is the responsibility of that spear? And if you look at the shield in our leadership, how do we protect, protect each other? How do we protect our own values? How do we keep ourselves also sane and healthy? So this, this balance between what we're sharing, handing out, what we're hunting, what we're protecting, it's such an important balance to start the leadership journey through the mountains of self-doubt and limiting beliefs, through the, the, the swamps of conflicts and hopelessness, and, and by providing a route or some insights and light in the steps ahead in our territory. Because if we're able to do that, it inspires trust in people. And not only in people, in ourselves as well. And that is the part again that we can control. And, and I'm, I'm also um, a big believer in, in the spiritual journey and strength that, that Krishna was describing. If, if we have high levels of, of trust in ourselves, it is something that others around us will pick up as well. And the philosophy of I will not complain, if we know what we are hunting, if we're going through tough mountains, what are the stories and the complaints that keep us actually drained, that make things negative? What can we drop? What is a life philosophy or the philosophy in our team that we can, that we can embrace and inspire people with so that we keep the fires of hope and purpose burning? And then we have a level of peace of mind and mindfulness, knowing where we are in order to cross that river of commitment and get people to the fire. So, so this is um, a way that you could hopefully get the, uh, have listen, having listened to Anthony's wisdom, to Krishna's wisdom and experience, perhaps this can help you a little bit of thinking about your own journey and the journey of uh, project futures 
how do we get people across? So I, I would love to um, give you some time to really reflect on this and to draw a map if you can, or at least make, make a few notes, but the map would be great. And to think about how do you see the collaborative journey to success in the NHS project futures? What are key moments and opportunities for your leadership on this expedition? And what can we do more to encourage and motivate each other and bring people around the fire? Because community and building community, it's about common unity, you know? So how do we bring that in? And when the expedition gets tough, what equipment do we need? And who do we need to bring along with us? So these questions you can also find in, in the resources that the, the resources, there's a document uploaded uh, in, the, in the platform. So you can, uh, we'll keep them on the screen as well, but you can find them there as well. And, uh, and before I, I, I give you that time, I would like to ask Anthony Krishna, do you have any, anything to add to this? Uh, yes, I mean, I think it's a it's a very difficult way to, to th imagine something because people are so unused to doing this. And apparently from the neuroscience, it actually does use a, a different part of the brain. But it's really just spent 20 minutes thinking about yourself, thinking about the amazing journey of the last year, of the challenges you've overcome, the swamps, the rivers. And and think about the lessons and that that way forward. And I think that is, uh, it's just, how do you see it? How can you ask and respect, reflect and, and say thank you to people who have probably inspired you in ways that they're unaware of yet and, and vice versa. And I think Krishna, what, what, are you, what are some of your thoughts as you, you would get people to think about their own journey? Yes, I think absolutely. I think um, it's great. Uh, the only way I think I, I kind of, if I may share is to, you know, just be conscious about uh, our own uh, in, inability rather than capability. I think that is the uh, important to have. So for example, uh, I think if we, if we hold our hand, we can only see the face of our hand outside, but we could not see the other side of the hand. But if you are aware consciously, the other side is also there. A lot of them, we are not conscious about that. You know, it's a little bit spiritual, small example. If we are aware ourselves, then we can enhance our capability. And equally, if someone, some other people are aware of that, it's also, you know, this is where we can come connect with the, connect with each other and we can make a progress in our future. Uh, just think about that when you draw a map for next 20 minutes and hopefully we'll give you some more tips and advice uh, in, in after that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, actually, Anthony, your point about neuroscience and I know you've had a session about this before. I'd love to connect to that a little bit as well on the importance of, of drawing and having a vision visualized actually maybe like a map it really helps your brain to create new connections and new neural uh, this is probably something that you can explain much better than i can <laughs> but um creates new pathways in your brain and um, as long as that future that you're seeing and the journey that you're seeing if you if that if you think about that and experience it in a mindful way your brain has difficulty know, knowing the difference between what is real and what is imagined. And it really creates, can create new habits, new ways of thinking and new automatic emotional responses. So even though maybe there's not, not necessarily an academic background as to what we've de developed, there is an academic background as to why this works. So I would really love to, to invite you to to use the things you've heard, the insights that you've got to put that a bit more in a mindful way on some reflection and try to, to draw a map or to take a few notes. And then we'll get back to you on screen uh, to give you instructions for the next part of the session. Thank you. 
And Mike, I think you were faced with the same challenge when you were given the blank sheet of paper. How did you start? Yes, indeed, Anthony, I did. Um, I started with the end in mind, actually. What was it that, what's the, what's the end game? What does the community, what's the benefit of joining the community and, and bringing round, people round to your, to your fire and sharing the wisdom and providing that sense of purpose and, and, uh, and passion? So I really started with the end in mind and then grew, grew outwards from there. And actually came to realize that there's parts of the map that we, that we haven't yet, um, uh, you know, um, we're not sure what that part of the map looks, looks like. Um, and there's a lot of fog. There was some, I think I described it as fog of uncertainty. Um, there's a desert, um, there's a desert area that which I put in there. So it was, it was really just to start to start that thinking and some of the some of the bridges that I drew on my map are half built um, because we've started some of the work to build those those bridges um, so people can cook can can walk across it without having to go through the uh, the rivers. So um, yeah, that's that's where I was going with mine, Anthony. Great. Well, thank you, and, and looking forward. And again, please think about it from your own perspectives, your own journey, your own time to to really think about yourself. Um, which probably you haven't had time to do for a long time. Absolutely. No, I think that that's, uh, this is great time. 20 minutes. Use it uh, to, re to reflect on what you've heard. Um, we, we look forward to welcoming you back. So we'll see you soon. Welcome back, everyone. I hope that was good to have a bit of time to think about these things that we so often don't have or take the time for. I hope, I hope it, it helped you to get some inspiration. And we'd love to utilize, of course, what you've come up with a little bit more. And for that purpose, we, we will have you work together in small groups. And I will give you a brief uh, instruction on that. Um, so based on, on your reflection points and the things you came up with, it would be great if, if every member in the group can just take briefly to summarize what were the key things that you thought of or that you found that really struck you based on what you've heard this morning. And if you then can collect the, those key points and perhaps place them in one of those corners based on the questions we asked, like what are the key opportunities for our leadership? Where is it really necessary? And perhaps how? What equipment do we need when things get really tough in the expedition? What are ways to really support each other and thank each other? And how to bring people around the fire? So if you can kind of um, collect them, uh, that, that may help a little bit to get a bit of structure and, and for the ease of reporting back. And then maybe check in with each other. Now, what gives you most hope? What gives most energy? What seems possible? And what gives that keeps that makes that fire burn within you already again a little bit? And really, we think with thirty minutes and with um, yeah all the things on your mind, I think that's already pretty challenging to have conversations around this uh, in only thirty minutes. But if you then could um, help us and help Mike and Christine with perhaps putting the key points in the chat or maybe the key points that give you most hope and energy if you can put that in the chat it would be great to hear that back from you and perhaps um you know if there's someone in the group wanting to share a map um that would be that would be great so th those are my my our instructions for your next 30 minutes um, I wish you very inspiring conversations and, and with a lot of hope and energy. Anthony Krishna, anything from your side? Um, well, I, I just think that some of the questions that have come through have been absolutely phenomenal about people thinking about how you can maintain your energy, how you do this. And I think obviously on your mind is that and the phenomenal question and answer so so please also think of some of the questions that maybe you've come up with uh, as you've been listening as you think about your own journey what are some of those areas uh krishna over yes uh, 
I think one of the uh, most important thing when I did the uh, mapping is the, so no plan is survived. You know, I think we, we uh, saw that it's important to, you know, have a vision when you are in a deathbed in, you know, 20 years time or 12 time. And then when you look back, whatever you've done, or life or matter or achievement, is that the worth doing it? I want you to think about the, not this generation, maybe our forthcoming generation kids and our generation after look back your map and it's still worth doing it. And if you have that vision, I think you'll have great output. Thank you. Thank you so much. We wish you a great half hour with each other. Thank you. See you after for the Q&A and for feedback. Thank you. Hi everyone, we hope you enjoyed the breakout rooms. Um, before we get on with um, everything else we have planned, we'd just like to take you back to the Q&A session. So I'm just going to go through the questions and um, our lovely presenters um, will answer them. So I'm going to start with the first one. How do you effectively coordinate teams under extreme pressure? Who wants to take that one up? I think Krishna is far and away the most qualified for that one. <laughs> um, Go on, thank Krish. You. Yeah, thank you. I think um, my experience is uh, uh, just, you know, reflecting my own, uh, you know, like during the military or my spiritual. So if you think about the uh, energy, that 60% of the energy is coming from outside. So basically whatever we eat or breathe is very minimal. The answer is then, you know, if we, again, if we reflect ourselves and surrounding and then, and then, then any situation is, you know, it's whatever we think, the mind, you know, brain will multiply it as it can. We, can we squeeze down reality? What is exactly happened? Uh, for example, you know, like uh, just when I was in uh, Cam, Cam on in Everest, an earthquake happened. Everyone is run around because they are like shock, you know. But if you actually just a little bit have a deep breathe, think about it. What is the real, real thing happened here? Only you can think is you can take a breath. What can you do the next move from there? All the thing you we uh, we go through our mind is the memories. All the thing we want to do something in the future is a Accumulate accumulation of our memories and uh, our knowledge, but only thing you can do in the emergency situation, any hard or the simple situation, is to take a breath, reflect yourself, and and make a decision uh, collectively. Listen to each other and then move it forward. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Chris. If I can yeah. just add a little tiny bit, I'm just thinking of a conversation we had with Jeremiah, who's a young Maasai who's just becoming a, an, an elder. And he said, well, we spend 90% of the time trying to work out the solution to the problem and not working out yeah. who to blame, which I thought was a very interesting uh, comment. Doubtson, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I, he also mentioned the importance of mindfulness. And I think that is very closely related to what Krishna also says. He says, being aware of what is happening in that moment with you allows you to step back a little bit and create a bit of space uh, outside of the, the intense emotion from that moment. And from that perspective or position of, of mindfulness, if you have some positivity, if that is something that comes to mind, and, uh, and trying to then focus on a solution, that is usually, it, it sounds maybe very simple, but it is so um, powerful to, to, to act in a situation of stress uh, in that way. So, so yeah, I, I hope that is helpful. Yeah, and another final one is really, there's no point complaining and that's all in your mm. mind. So when you're under stress, I will not complain. I will find the solution and I will inspire hope and find those who know the solution. So uh, that's just another minor one that I try to use. Yeah. That brings me to also another point. I'm sorry, uh, Christine. <laughs> it's okay, Dyson. Um, <laughs> uh, one 
because it is um, we can really be affected by what is happening around us. And before you know it, um, we become reactive. So our, our behavior becomes very responsive to, to what is happening. And sometimes, of course, you have to. When there's a fire, you have to get the fire out and then think of how can you prevent it next time or what do we do next? But in, in general terms, perhaps of empowerment, self-empowerment and mindset, what I find a really strong one is to think, what if, what if this is happening for me and not to me? And from that little change, um, it resonates with what Anthony is saying, you know, stop complaining. It, not that people are complaining, but what if this happens for me? If, if that is really the case, if that is the way to look at life, then what options do I have? Or what choice do I, does that give me? So, so that is also one I'd like to throw in. Thank you. No, 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 that's all great. Yeah, and it, it resonates with me as well. I think uh, we've had these discussions before. Um, I'm a Taekwondo master. Um, yeah, and we used to teach, yeah, just to get to past um, what you're actually thinking. But it is hard sometimes, isn't it? Especially if you're panicking. And you just want to, you know, you can sometimes see that veil come down, you know, and uh, you can stop. But hopefully, and, and in teams, if you've got enough people in the room, hopefully someone will be that leader, calm people down, and then, you know, help everyone else to get the focus. So, um, yeah, really um, important points there. So thank you. So the next one, um, how do you keep the momentum going through the initial excitement into normality? Now, um, I assume this one may be, uh, may be good for Chris, this one, because it's probably about how you do things in, in reality. And if you're excited about something and actually making it um, real and keep going with something. Um, but yeah, if anyone else has got different perspectives on that one. Well, yeah, I mean, for me, I think most of my expeditions have sort of evolved from sitting around a bar and someone saying, let's go and climb a mountain and off you go. And I think there's a massive amount between when you think you're yeah. going to do something and when it actually happens. And you're always going, why on earth did I embark on this? And I think that's why you need the clarity of the summit or whatever. But over to you, Krishna, you, you'll have much more to say about that. Yes, I think, like we say, I think, I think it's very important. Sometimes we focus on the um, objective than the subjective, and also, you know, um, um, if we have wider understanding of, uh, you know, like uh, universe, Earth, and Moon, you know, it's, we are very, you know, tiny in this in this universe. And for example, we need to have a clear vision. Uh, you know, like scientifically proven that the uh, anything less than you know twelve years is that's why we come co come across the depression and anxiety and our our mind, body, mind, mental energy, uh, uh, psychology energy, and our body energy is always in line with the you know moon and universe. This is where our energies we come from. Like I say, the sixty percent of energies come from outside which we are not aware of. And the, I think if we have this understanding, it's for, for us to have a clear, uh, concise understanding, it's how can we control our sense perception and how we see, feel, hear, touch, or smell. And if we can enhance our perception you know, further, uh, you know, and then this is where we can enhance ourselves and equally enhance the rest of the world. And if you see this way, and then the, um, we can actually have a peaceful life and very clear and concise moment, make a decision. It helps us to have a clear vision, clear and have a clear map, which will help us to see through all the foggy or all the whatever the altitude we are living. Still, we have to live and breathe in that moment to have a clear understanding of the future. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can, the next can, one. can I just say one very, very yeah, brief thing? Yes. Well, that is that all of my photographs look as if I spent my entire life on holiday and being sort of, <laughs> you know, just running from one mountain to another. Not, it's absolutely not at all. Those photographs are taken a week here, a week there. Mm. And that is ultimately to maintain my own momentum and my own peace of mind. Mm. 
because I know when you've got a goal, it just unleashes so much wonderful energy. So you saw the photographs of really how I maintain my momentum, which is by doing silly things like falling off mat galloping camels, because I need to have that little bit of excitement of something that's real. And I find it refreshes and inspires me. Yeah, and those are the moments you remember as well, Anthony, aren't they? Correct. Um, and you, that's you can a, come back to, yeah. yeah what but, great yeah. photographs. We're all jealous. Well, Jill. Back to Krishna. Um, we have alluded to this one, but the question is, um, does Krishna have advice for calming fears and getting people focused on solving the problem, which I think you have said with that breathing and whether it's mindfulness techniques, Dowson as well, or whether it's martial arts or whether it's anything else, breathing is so important isn't it? and that calming ability and just getting back in the moment as well but for me krishna with this question is there any stories you want to share with us when you were on that mountain did anyone actually kind of lose it a little bit where you had to you know take control and um you know get that person actually calmed down have, have you got any stories to share on that yeah absolutely i think um one of the, the only reason I submitted the Everest is, uh, was I was emotionally connected with my loved one, my parents, my family, and my friend. Because when you are in that situation, there is no hope. You know, when you are in that situation, there is no future, which is you think, again, it's mm -hmm. only in your mind, it's in, only in your brain, when you are thinking about it. But actually the rest of the whole, your energy life system is keep on going, keep on moving, which we, we are unaware of. I think because I look at my every step when you when you when you can't think about the uh, you know forget about the future you are struggling to move one step forward. That's the only time because I was I was so much inspired with my my walk, my colleagues and my friend and my parents and my loved one. Then I almost forget myself. I was so much I was into that energy, into the emotion of my love and then I had no choice, you know, there is no failure. So you, only thing is you move forward one step. If you can walk, you walk. If you can't walk, you lie down, you still roll. Yeah, you still turn your body towards the direction you want to move. That's the only way that energy, again, is come from the emotion, love. And if we are clear, uh, our thought is a language of our mind and brain. Our emotion is language of our body. That body energy, again, is come from 60% outside from energy and then our loved one emotion that is so strong. That's why I think it's very important to have whatever situation is. I think let's, you know, a little bit, you know, sit back ourselves and, you know, what's that mean to me? Is that mean to me dying in 12 years? And then I think in that moment, the only reason I submit the Everest or any of the situation is, I am willing, you know, I, I got no complaint in my life. I'm here to mean, and then that's the only way you're moving forward. Keep, if you can run, run, run. If you can walk, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. If you can't crawl, roll, you know, this is the only way moving forward. Thank you. Yeah, that, that movement is so important. Um, yeah, just keep going forward. Um, and also not to, uh, yeah, again, I used to teach um, if you fall down, because everyone falls down in life, don't they? It's how quickly you get up and then keep moving forward. So, yeah, couldn't agree more with that one. Would anyone else like to add anything to that, Dyson? Maybe a few words, yeah. It's beautiful what you're describing, uh, Krishna, and I actually don't want to spoil it. But um, oh, <laughs> So, yeah, we live in a, in a, in a universe of energy. Of, it's a vibrational universe and I'm, I'm sure you know this as well Christine from your studies in Taekwondo emotions are energy in motion mm. and low feeling low feeling hopeless feeling despair those are such low vibrational frequencies that it is very hard to to achieve something from that state so what 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 really I feel like Krishna is describing? If you can can get yourself back to very highly uh, vibrating emotions like love, gratitude, um, that 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 becomes energy and motion, and it shif shifts into a different emotion. And there is so much power in that. 
And it may not always be easy to apply it in the moment, but I think being aware of it is the first step and then trying it out and working with it. And those are things are also practice. It's also something that Jeremiah said, the young elder from the Maasai community that, that we, that Anthony and I work with a lot. He also said, uh, part of, of my life and my health is not only training my body and, and, and eating well, but it's also a lot about training my mind and my mindset. And this has to do with this as well. What do I want to focus on or, or what are the emotions that I want to entertain, so to speak? And uh, the higher the frequency, the more power and strength we have and the more we also radiate that to others. Um, yeah, that's what I want to do. Oh, that's great, I'm, I'm sure I'm, Anthony's got something to add. Come on, I'm Anthony. really conscious of time, but I think, yes, we can have the energy. Yes, we can have the enthusiasm, but we need someone to help us and to believe in us. And I really, really want to thank Eddie Oban and Tammy Watchhorn, Watchhorn because they're the ones that met me and they said, why don't we try something? And I think what it requires is someone to have that courage to say, I trust you. And I really, really want to thank them because we would not be here. We wouldn't have had the wonderful experience we're working with you, Christine and Mike and, and Jocelyn and everybody else. So I really want to say that we need people to help us. We need them to say, I trust you. I believe in you. And I think that is the most important thing that anybody can have. And thank you so much to everybody. And thank you for your time listening today uh, to, to this message and, and our hopes and our fears and uh, our enthusiasm. Oh, well, uh, yeah, we can just fit in, I think, one more question, Anthony. But just a, a quick question to you all, really, um, because we've been on about how, how to cope, really, with these things. So does anyone want to show any, any kind of like, quick tips or tricks, techniques um, of how you actually calm yourselves and make yourself focused in your daily mm -hmm. lives. Yeah, okay. I, I think if I, if I can quickly share the way I do, you know, and then where I, come, uh, where, where I calm myself during the combat situation around the world or in the mountain or with the family in daily life in the house, I think it's still the same. So. In, in, in the UK and in the Europe, we lot about talk about the karma or action, what we do is consequences. But I think it is important for us to, you know, have a map ourselves, first of all. So in, in, in the Himalayas or in the culture where I grown up, we have the, you know, like we call the Kriya. So when someone death in the family, we go inside ourselves and have understanding what is the meaning of life and have understanding what is the meaning of emotion and connect with the rest of the world. So that is that, that that's why I think three things, if anything, help for you to understand yourself, take a breath, and every breath you you conscious about your mind and brain and then thought come into your brain and then also whatever the conscious out awareness outside in that period, that will give you the extend your vibration and an emotion energy from one meter to two meter to three meter. That is fact. That's how you can connect and understanding. And so that is the one thing I want you to take away and that will keep you calm and understanding the, yourself and your colleagues, your loved one. It's only one thing exists because we are, wherever I am individual exists that that makes me feel my family exists, my country exists, my rest of the world exists for me. So that's how we started. Thank you. All right, that's great. Oh, thank you all for the question there. So that's been a, yeah, quite enlightening, I think, for everybody there. So um, that's enough from me. Thank you. Well, thank you all so much. And uh, really, really, it's been a privilege to uh, to be with you and I hope that you've enjoyed the time for yourself to think of how great you you are and the leadership principles going ahead uh, with Mike this afternoon but thank you so much. Thank you. Awesome.